Right, good afternoon everyone. Uh, today we are going to be looking at diabetes. Uh, so we are going to want to know about the two types of diabetes that we have in type 1 and type 2. We're going to want to identify some of the symptoms that go along with it and how we treat the two of those and we're going to look at some of the risk factors that are associated with type 2 diabetes. You can get lots of questions that are driven up graphs uh, and data so we're going to practice a little bit of graph analysis and then we've got a graph analysis question towards the end and uh, the really big one is being able to compare both type 1 and type 2 diabetes so I've got a nice activity for us to have a go at there. So a little bit of a starter activity to begin us off we have uh, four keywords down the side there that are associated with our lesson from yesterday which was controlling blood sugar, so glucose, glycogen, insulin, and glucagon. Remember the importance of spellings of the, that glycogen and glucagon and not confusing them. What I'd like you to do is pause the video at this point and to write down or think of your best definition for each of those terms. So glucose is, of course, it's a sugar, it's a carbohydrate and it is used in respiration and the point of that is in order to release energy. Glycogen is um, lots of glucoses joined together and so it's a storage molecule and it is uh, made and stored in the liver but that also happens in muscle cells as well. Insulin is of course a hormone uh, which is a chemical messenger that is produced in the pancreas which is an endocrine gland and it travels from the pancreas to places like the liver and the muscle cells, all cells around the body in the blood, um, where it causes blood glucose concentration to decrease because the cells take up the glucose and they turn it into glycogen. Glucagon is the uh, antagonistic hormone, so it's a hormone that works in a reverse way to insulin in that it uh, increases blood glucose level so it's produced by the pancreas it uh, travels in the blood to liver and muscle cells and what it does is it causes glycogen to be turned back into glucose which then gets released into the blood and so it will uh, increase the blood glucose concentration right we looked at this diagram uh, yesterday for talking about how our blood glucose level is controlled. Remember, this is really important that you are able to um, remember it in this level of detail. So see if you can work around and identify what goes in each of the different boxes for me, please. So pause the video here, have a go at those. Okay, so normal blood glucose level. So if the blood glucose level increases, we know that that's going to be detected by the pancreas, which means that insulin is going to be released from the pancreas, travels in the blood around the body, where it causes all cells generally to absorb glucose. And specifically, the liver and muscle cells will take up glucose and will turn it into that storage molecule, molecule glycogen. That means that the blood glucose level decreases, and so it returns back to normal which switches off insulin production by the pancreas, which is an example of negative feedback. If the blood glucose level decreases, that is again detected by the pancreas, but this time it produces the hormone called glucagon. Glucagon travels in the blood around the body where it causes the liver and muscle cells to break down the glycogen that they've stored and to turn it into glucose. That increases the blood glucose level uh, so it returns it back to normal and that switches off the glucagon production by the pancreas which is uh, an example of negative feedback again so those two hormones work together in order to maintain our blood glucose level around a fixed point so diabetes is all about when that uh, control of blood glucose level goes awry and it's linked into the functioning of um, insulin in particular. So what it means is, is that you are unable to control your blood glucose levels. Roughly 1 in 16 people in the UK 
uh, suffer from diabetes, both type 1 and type 2, as we'll come to. And it is estimated that in uh, four years' time, that about 5 million people are going to have diabetes in the UK. It's uh, the fastest growing health concern in the UK, and it has a number of complications. So it's really important that uh, diabetics manage their blood glucose levels well, because we have increased risk of heart disease, stroke, you can get nerve damage, which means that you uh, are unable to feel sensation quite as well. Or the flip side of that is that actually it can feel like your limbs are on fire as well. It can cause you to go blind. And it's also the biggest cause of non-emergency amputation in the Western world. The biggest cause of people having limbs amputated. So it's really important. Don't need to write anything from this slide. Right, have a look at this graph. So we have per patient A and patient B. And with patient A, we can see that the blood glucose level, um, so we've got a drink occurring at zero hours here. And then over the period of time, the two hours that the uh, blood sugar level is taken, it's taken every half an hour, we can see that the blood glucose level uh, increases. Uh, increases quite rapidly at first and then a shallower increase as time goes on for patient A. For patient B, we can see that there is uh, an initial steep increase and then uh, the blood glucose level drops down quite steeply for the first hour and then less steeply over the next 30 minutes. Now the question is, which patient has diabetes? And you need to come up with some reasons for why you think it's either patient A or patient B. So pause the video, have a think about that and your explanation. So hopefully you've identified the fact that it is of course patient A uh, and some of the reasons that you may have gone down that route and you'd be looking for a couple of these reasons really where if you were justifying it would be that number one, their blood glucose levels are always higher Okay, very obvious, but you wouldn't necessarily have thought of that first of all. But we can see that the line is consistently higher than patient B. For um, patient A, we can also say that after they've consumed their drink at zero hours, so here on this graph, the blood glucose levels always rise. So we can see that um, there is no attempt by the body in order to reduce the blood glucose levels so cells aren't absorbing glucose and turning it into glycogen. And uh, another reason that you might look at is that the blood glucose levels never decrease. Um, so it's showing that there is there's no method of control coming in to deal with those blood glucose levels. So um, these next two sections you do want to make some notes on because you need to know about um, each of the type of diabetes and you need to be able to identify symptoms, uh, the causes and some tre uh, treatments with both ones. So first of all we'd want to look at type 1 diabetes and so the point with type 1 diabetes is that it doesn't produce enough insulin or it produces no insulin at all in the pancreas. So there's no insulin going into the blood. If there's no insulin going into the blood, then there's going to be no absorption of glucose and turning it into glycogen. What that means is, is that they're unable to control their blood glucose levels. So those blood glucose levels are going to fluctuate an awful lot. And so they're going to have their symptom is going to be uncontrolled high blood glucose levels. So if you test their blood, the blood glucose level will vary an awful lot. There are some other ones as well, and, and some of these symptoms are shared with type 2, um, but some of them uh, will be things like uh, frequent ur urination, uh, some can be really thirsty or hungry, can be very tired, blurry vision, weight loss, and irritability. Um, so all of those things can be potential symptoms of type 1 diabetes, and some of them are shared with type 2. Uh, point about this one is the fact that type 1 diabetes has to be controlled using insulin injections and that has to occur for a person's life. So this uh, type of diabetes develops in early life and from that period on the individual will need to in 
inject themselves with insulin regularly in order to control their blood glucose levels. Now type 2 diabetes, so again you'll need notes on this section, um, is here it's not something that is inherent in your body that's potentially genetic um, that you've, you've developed as a result of your body not working properly. This is all down to your diet. And so your pancreas produces the correct amount of insulin, but your body cells end up stopping responding to it. So um, your big risk factor around type 2 diabetes is about um, you being obese and your diet containing lots of a high amount of sugary foods. So there being lots and lots of sugar in there. And what it does is essentially it, it stops your cells responding to those that insulin that's being produced because it's there all the time so they just start ignoring it. Um, so the interesting thing with type, type, type 2 diabetes is it doesn't need to be controlled by injecting insulin. Some people do, but normally it isn't. And so actually with this, you can control it using uh, your diet. So you make sure that you don't eat too many sugary foods, that you control the amount of carbohydrates that are in your diet so that your blood sugar levels don't um, vary wildly. And you balance all of that with the amount of exercise that you do. In actual fact, for some type 2 diabetics, um, and my mum was a type 2 diabetic, she developed it, um, you are able to actually really take back your symptoms and some of the problems that you have if uh, you go on a very strict uh, carbohydrate hydrate control diet and it can make a huge difference to type 2 diabetics. So make notes on that please. Right, so our first task, uh, a Venn diagram for us. So in the blue circle you write down features that only apply to type 1 diabetes. In the orange circle, you write down uh, the features that only occur in type 2 diabetes. And then in the green kind of oval where the two circles intersect, you need to write down uh, shared characteristics, so things that are both. This is a really important part, and so it could be a, a nice long answer question or something like that. So pause the video, have a go at that task. So things that you should have picked up in type 1, the, the pancreas fails to produce sufficient insulin or produces no insulin, uh, whereas in type 2, the body cells stop responding to the insulin that's produced, so it's still made, it's just the body cells don't respond. But key in both of them is that the sufferer is unable to control their blood glucose levels, so no control of blood glucose levels. Type 1 has to be treated using insulin injections, whereas type 2 can be treated using uh, a carbohydrate controlled diet uh, and uh, that managing an exercise regime. For both, both um, one of the main symptoms will be the fact that their uh, blood glucose levels will always be high and they'll be, or not always be high, but they'll be high and that they'll be uncontrolled. So there'll be a lot of fluctuation within their blood glucose levels. Type 2, um, a risk factor would be the fact that um, you're being obese and consuming lots of sugar, um, which isn't the case for type 1 because you, generally you kind of inherit this or it's something that you develop early on in your life. Um, so type 1 cannot be prevented. If, if you end up developing it, there's nothing that you could have done to have prevent the development of that disease. Um, whereas in type 2, if you change your diet, you can stop the development of type 2 diabetes. If you lower your carbohydrate intake and you lose weight and you increase your exercise. So um, that takes us to the end of the content for this. So uh, here's a little bit of a quiz for you. So with each of the questions, you need to decide whether it's uh, describing type 1 or type 2 diabetes. Question 1. Uh, it can develop as a result of poor lifestyle. That would of course be type 2. The onset is gradual, so lots of people do not know that they have it. So that would of course be type 2. The pancreas does not release any or enough insulin. 
course, be type 1. Cannot be treated with insulin injections. That would, of course, be type 2. Uh, not normally treated with insulin injections. Involve the inability of the body to accurately control blood glucose levels. That would, of course, be both of the type of diabetes. A little bit of a trick question there. So it can only be treated with a change in lifestyle, for example, more exercise and less carbohydrates. That would, of course, be type 2. Right, now there's some tasks for you to do. So I would like you to turn to the diabetes section of your booklet, please. So um, that would be... Uh, page uh, 12, I think are the numbers, can't quite see them. Uh, what you need to do is you need to read through the information that is given there and you need, to, first of all, there's the keyword review to have a go at and then turning over the page to 13 and 14, there are nine questions uh, that I would like you to have a go at. Once you've done that, there's the extension task to have a look at. You're going to need to do a little bit of research on that using the internet, please. So having paused the video there, we should now be at a point where we can um, go through the answers. So question one, how many people in, are affected by diabetes in the UK? 4.9 billion people currently. Four symptoms, uh, feeling thirsty, urinating frequently, feeling very tired and weight loss. Which type of diabetes would someone not produce enough insulin? That would be type one. Which type of diabetes would someone's cells not respond to the insulin being produced? Is of course type two. Main difference in the treatments between type 1 and type 2. Type 1 will inject insulin. Type 2 is all about dietary control. Um, what do people with both type of diabetes have to make sure that they consider about their diet? So it's number one where it should be healthy, um, but uh, you are controlling the amount of carbohydrates, particularly sugars, that you consume. The other thing that diabetics could do to lower their blood glucose level would be to exercise regularly. Main risk factors for type 2 diabetes would be obesity. Uh, what would the BMI of someone with the risk factor that you stated in question 8 be? You'd be looking for someone who's got a high BMI that puts them into the overweight or obese categories. So the extension question, so remember you uh, need to do a bit of research over this one. Uh, this is a, I'll give you a list of some treatments. You may well come up with some alternate ones as well. So um, one thing could be potentially pancreas transplant. So there are some issues with that one. More likely would be begin to think about um, moving over to kind of stem cell treatment or genetic engineering and gene therapy type treatments. So um, you could use stem cells, which you could insert into someone which would allow them to produce insulin, ideally their own stem cells, because that would get you around some of the problems of rejection uh, and things like that. Or potentially, you could also use a technique called gene therapy, which would allow you to treat the problem. Some of the things that you might want to consider um, is some of the advantages and disadvantages that go along with each one. So advantages for all of them would be about the fact that they treat um, the diabetes uh, with pancreas transplants. A disadvantage might be the fact that they could be rejected, um, as could be cell transplants as well. The embryonic stem cells ones, that could be about rejection or the immune system uh, attacking them, or that they might not work in quite the same way. Um, with 
the adult stem cells, your big advantage there is about the fact that someone might not reject those, um, but it can be difficult to get those cells into the right place. Um, so that takes us through uh, those questions from the booklet. Uh, if you turn over onto page 15, then there is a graph there for you to look at. So this is the graph. Um, which of the two lines is someone with diabetes? So very similar to that uh, question I took you through before. Uh, and can you identify some of the key information that goes along with it? So um, kind of points that we talked about before would be thinking about that the uh, top line, the green line, is the diabetic person, whereas the red line, the bottom line, is the normal person, um, doesn't have diabetes. And so type two, always got higher blood glucose levels. Initially, we see that higher increase in glucose concentration after it's been taken in, and it takes slower for it to return back down to its normal level, um, which we uh, doesn't happen over the entire five hour period. Right, thank you very much and I will see you for our live lesson tomorrow.